Hi! In this short demo, I'll show you how to track and manage your project's bugs and issues using Airtable's Bug Tracker template. Our template's example is based on PorchCam, a fictional company that makes high-tech home security cameras and their accompanying apps, so their team has to track a wide variety of issues for both hardware and software. Right now, we're currently in the bugs table here, which holds all of the bug reports that have been created. Our template also has a table for team members, which contains everyone on the PorchCam team, and one for product facets. And so, at PorchCam, product facets are basically a single feature of our security camera, like its alerts or the Android app. And it's useful for us to break down our product into facets so that we can keep tabs on which facets are associated with each bug report. For example, we can see here that this button issue is tied to the live streaming facet. So let's say that we just found a bug during an internal QA testing session. We can enter it directly into the bug table here. So let's say the bug is that battery life isn't displaying properly. We can skip these three initial fields here because they're actually for the support team to fill out later. We can set the priority to high. And you'll notice that creating a new bug report automatically displays the create date, time, as well as the number of days that the report has been open. We can fill in a description of the bug. The battery icon doesn't display when selected in the device menu and then fill out the bug source. In our case, we can just put internal QA testing session, select any associated facets. So in our case, it would just be battery, and upload any relevant attachments. For this bug report, we actually have a screenshot that we want to upload. So we can click upload. And lastly, we just want to select who is creating this bug report. In our case, let's say that it's Bernard. And this is actually useful in case that there's any follow-up needed from our team to resolve the bug later on. We can also use a form to submit bug reports, which I'll cover later. And this can be useful if you want people who don't have access to this base here to still be able to submit bugs. So now that we've created our bug report, Let's switch gears. Let's say that we're a member of the support team who's entered this base to triage the bug reports and screen, prioritize, and assign them. We can start by checking on all of the newly filed bug reports. So if a bug report doesn't have a status or an assignee, that means it still needs to be triaged. So we just have this new bug report that we just filed here. We can start by checking to see if it's been filed already. So taking a quick scan, it looks like it hasn't. And then we can take a look at the bug report details. So we can see the age of the bug report, its description, and all of its relevant information. We would then check to see if we're able to reproduce the bug. So we might have a sample PorchCam device, and we can reproduce the bug on that device. So now that we know it's a real bug, we can assign the bug to someone for them to fix. The assign to field here is a linked field which lets us link bug reports in this table to team members in the team members table. So for this new bug report here, we can assign the bug to Stefan. And if we go over to the team members table, we'll actually see that new bug report is also assigned to Stefan there under his assigned reports. If we want to notify Stefan about this bug, we can do so by clicking here to expand the record. And if Stefan's a collaborator in this space, we can tag him with an at mention. And this will allow us to message him and shoot him a notification. So we can say, can you take a look at this bug? And now we're done triaging this bug report. So, Let's imagine that we fast forward to a few weeks later. And so as you can see, our bugs table has filled up quite a bit, but 
Let's continue triaging the new reports that have just come in. So for this night vision bug here, after we inspected the bug report, let's say that we tried to reproduce it, but we actually weren't able to do so. So we can mark its status as can't reproduce and move on for the time being. Essentially, it's a low priority for us to tackle at this time, and we can always come back later to try and diagnose what's happening. For this program options bug here, let's say that we're starting to go through and triage the bug report, but we realize that we don't have enough information to reproduce the bug. So we can see who submitted the bug, Marcellus in this case, and ask for more clarification from him. So we can tag Marcellus and ask him, where did this bug occur for you? And so after Marcellus comes in and adds in the relevant information, we can continue triaging this bug report. For this last siren bug here, we actually realize that it looks similar to a bug that someone filed earlier. So we have an alarm siren bug here that is in progress and assigned to Marcellus. So we can mark this new bug as a duplicate and then link to it in the original uh, bug report that's currently assigned to Marcellus to keep everything organized together. So the duplicates field here actually links bug reports in this table to other bug reports in this table. So what we can do is go into the primary bug report, this alarm siren bug here, and link to the new siren bug. So siren goes off without any particular reason. And so now for this bug report, in the duplicates field, we'll see the new duplicate uh, bug report linked to it. For some teams, it can also be helpful to create a link both ways so that you can see the primary bug report when you're viewing a duplicates. So we can go to the duplicate bug report here and in this field, link to the primary one. So alarm, siren, will sometimes sound without any alert being triggered. And now we're done triaging all of our bug reports. Now let's put ourselves in the shoes of a PorchCam engineer, Quinn, who wants to see all of the bugs assigned to her so that she can work through and resolve them. We can start by creating a new view of the bug reports that only shows the ones that are assigned to Quinn. And this will let her view only the bug reports relevant to her without affecting what everyone else is seeing. So we can create a new view here. Let's name it Quinn so that everyone knows that it's Quinn's view and then name it assigned bugs. Next, we can filter all the reports to only see the ones that are assigned to Quinn. And so any filtering, sorting, or grouping that we do in this view will be preserved. So we can actually click into another view. Uh, we were in the all bug reports view earlier. And then back to Quinn's. It'll all be saved. So now we can focus on fixing Quinn's bugs. Let's say that Quinn is actually blocked on this live streaming bug right now. So we can update the status from in progress to blocked. And that way our entire team can keep track of that development. And we've started working on this previously recorded videos bug here, so we can change its status to in progress. And lastly, we fixed the Android bug here. So let's update its status from in progress to complete. And now Quinn is all good to go. So with our Airtable template, it's also easy to manage our pipeline of bug reports and keep our entire team on track. We can get a visual representation of the entire bug pipeline by going to our Kanban view here. And so Kanban view lets you organize your records in stacked cards based on a single select field. Ours is currently organized by the status field, but you can easily edit it or create another view if needed. So we can click on the card for a bug report to see all of its information and even drag it from one column to another to update its status. 
Now let's dive into another view that we've created to help us manage our bug reports. In this case, open bugs and issues. In this view, we've already filtered the records to only show open bug reports, but we can also group our records here to create quick reports for our overall bug pipeline. So let's group all of our records by priority. And now we can easily see the most important open bugs that we still need to tackle. And when you group records, we can see a summary bar up here for each group that gives us some quick reporting. So in this case, we could see the earliest date a bug was filed for each priority level, or the average number of days old of a bug uh, in that group, and whatever else we might find relevant. We could also group these records by the assigned to field instead, and this would give us an overview of everyone's workload. So it looks like everyone's workload is pretty manageable at the moment. Now, as you saw earlier, we can also tag and notify our teammates in this template using an at mention. But I'll quickly show you how to add new teammates as collaborators so that they can have access to this base. And all we have to do is click on the share button here, and we can invite our teammates by email or create an invite link that we can send out to our team. So next, I'll show you how to adapt this template to fit whatever workflow that makes the most sense for your team. So going back to our all bug reports view in the bugs table, let's say that we want to start tracking the software versions in which a bug fix is released. So for some context, at PorchCam, we actually batch our various changes and bug fixes into software update versions. So it's helpful for us to see when a bug fix is going to be released. We can start by creating a new table here for software update versions. And let's say that we have three different versions so far, v1.0, v1.1, and v1.2. We can get rid of these extraneous fields right now. We just don't need them. And let's add a date field to track the expected release date for each version. So let's select date, and let's name it expected release date. And so let's say that v1 came out earlier this, v1.0 came out earlier this month, v1.1 is coming out later this week, and v1.2 is going to come out just before the new year. One cool thing is that we can actually create a new calendar view here. So we can click into here and create a new calendar. Let's call it our version release calendar. And what this does is actually take our release dates that we just created and plots them onto a calendar. So going back into our main view here, let's say that we actually also want to add a single select field to track the status of each software update. So we can create a new field, and we want to make it a single select field. And let's say the options are released and planned. We can change this color to yellow, and this one to green. And then let's also name it uh, status. So v1.0 has been released and v1.1 and v1.2 are still in the planning stages. So going back into our bugs table, we can actually create a new field here that links to the software update where the bug fix is going to be released. So we can create a new field, and it's going to link to our software update versions table. And so we can call it software update version. Now, for the new bug that Quinn just finished fixing, she had marked it as complete. And now what we can do is go into this field that we just created and select V1.1. So for this recorded video bug, we can see that's complete and it's going to be released in the V1.1 software update. 
If we click into the software update versions table, we'll see that this bug is also there under the v1.1 software update. And so let's say that our support team also wants to pull the expected release date that we created into the bug table here so that it's easier for them to track the status of their reports. We can actually do this by creating a lookup field that pulls that date in from the software update versions table. So let's create a new field here. And it's going to be a lookup type. It's pulling through software update version and it's going to be showing the expected release date. So let's name it accordingly. And so what this is doing is actually pulling this date through the v1.1 record in the software update versions table. And so this is incredibly useful because it helps us keep track of the date in a single place instead of us having to enter and update it in multiple places. So if we go back into the software update versions table, let's say that v1.1 has actually been delayed. So it's going to be delayed from the 23rd to the beginning of next week, the 26th. And so we can update it here. And it'll update for all of the lookup fields in our entire table. So we'll see that the date has updated here. So as you can see, it's easy to make changes and add things as you need them in Airtable. Now, at the beginning of the demo, I mentioned that we can also use a form in this template to submit bug reports. And forms are an easy way to collect information, and the entries show up in Airtable in real time. So if our team wants to create a form for logging bugs, we can do so by clicking here. And here we can add and edit the form text. So let's call this example form. We can rearrange the order of the questions. So you can drag this out, switch the order. And we can just essentially tweak things as we see fit. You can create as many forms as you'd like, edit them, or delete them. And so for this case, let's actually click into a final version of the form that we've already created. So here it's bug and issue submission form. And so at PorchCam, we use this form to let our customers submit bug reports since we don't want to give them access to our base. And so in this form view, if we've made any updates to this form, we can preview it before we share it publicly. We can click on preview here to open up a new tab with our live form. And if everything looks good and we're ready to share it, we can click on share form, which gives us a link here to share with our customers so that they can access the form without needing an Airtable login. Otherwise, we could also embed the form on our website. So let me just set up something here really quickly. And so here we have our live form, and here is where all of our bug reports are populated. Let's go ahead and pretend that we're a customer and fill out this bug form. So in our scenario, let's say it happens to be the same battery issue that we reported earlier. So battery life doesn't display when prompted. And so we'll include description. When I try to select the battery option in settings, the battery icon doesn't display at all. I can put input my email here so that the PorchCam team can follow up with me, john at example.com. And let's say that I'm just not going to upload any attachments here. And so when we submit the form, we'll notice that the report automatically appeared in Airtable here. And so this concludes our short webinar on how to track and manage your project's bugs and issues in Airtable using our bug tracker template. Remember that this template is just the starting point for your team and that Airtable is incredibly flexible so that you can easily customize it to fit your team's needs and workflows, whatever they might be. Thanks for joining.